there. I'm unmuted. Great. Hey, it's SLP. This is Watch Me Work. Uh, we're doing it five days a week and we just started on Monday. So um, this is day five of our first week, Monday through Friday. I know weekends don't feel like weekends these days, at least to me, they don't. So, but there's a weekend coming up. So woohoo. Um, is anybody new to watch me work? I'll explain what we do. Everybody's been here already. You're new. I'm, Tammy I'm new. And, okay, great. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, I'll I'm just, I'll, okay. I'll I'm explain fine. it really, I'll explain it really quick so we know what it is and we know what it ain't, you know. Um, a lot of people are confused when I use the title Watch Me Work. Um, but so Watch Me Work, it's a show. The me in the title is all about you. It's a, it's a, it's an experience, this virtual experience where we can, you guys can ask me questions about your creative process. I'm Susan Lee Parks. I'm a writer. I write a lot of different kinds of things, plays, movies, TV shows, songs. I have a band, blah, 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 lots of stuff. I've been doing Watch Me Work in the lobby of the public theater for 11 years. We do it live every Monday at five. Um, uh, we uh, live stream with the help of Howl Round. And a big thank you to the public theater and Howl Round today for bringing us together, helping it happen for uh, all of you guys. Um, I figured about a week and a half ago, I was talking to Audrey and Miranda. I'm like, I wanna do it five days a week because I think that it could be helpful to people in this difficult time. Um, here's what we do. So I said, it's a show, it's a play, like all the world's a stage. It's a play where we create the action and the dialogue together. And basically what we're going to do for the first 20 minutes is we're going to create the action together by working together. Um, I will set my timer and I'm looking, where did I put my timer this morning? I'll find it sooner or later. Um, I'll set my timer. Give me a sec. Hello. No. Um, and uh, we will work for 20 minutes. After that, we will, you guys will, you people will ask me questions about your creative process. What we don't have time for uh, in this context is to, for me to offer critique and feedback on specific work. So if you write something and you want to read it and have me give feedback, uh, that's not what this is about. The questions that uh, I'll be entertaining our questions about your creative process, okay? So questions like, I don't know how to get started or I feel like I have that writer's block thing or how do I know when I'm finished writing something or how do I get my characters to talk to me or yeah, I wanna write a novel and I've only written screenplays, what do I do? Things like that, okay? Your creative process, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Um, Okay, anything else, Audrey? I'm gonna mute myself and I'm gonna look around for my timer. Hey, oh, perfect. <laughs> I'll vamp with some how to ask questions. Um, so uh, you can ask questions if you are in the Zoom by raising your hand, you can click on the raise your hand button. Um, it'll uh, likely be in a participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen if you're using a computer or at the top if you're using an iPad is my experience. Um, and I'll be able to see a little blue hand pop up on your face and I'll call on us in the order that um, we get the questions. Um, the other way to ask questions is if you're watching uh, HowlRound.TV, if you're just watching the stream and you're not in the Zoom itself, you can ask questions via Twitter or Instagram uh, on the public theaters channels or on the Watch Me Work Twitter, which is at Watch Me Work SLP and you hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And that's it. Yay, and I found my timer. Um, the advantages of living in a very small apartment. <laughs> it's all right here somewhere. Okay, so I'm gonna set my timer for 20 minutes. Is everybody ready? You worked and you're ready to, to do something? Okay, what's today? The 3rd of April. Okay, and here we go.
How great. How great was that? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, that was the uh, that was the action part of the show, and now we're moving rapidly into the dialogue part of the show, where y'all out there who might have questions about your work or your creative process can ask. All Anybody? right. You ready? The first question is from Meredith. All right, Meredith, you should be unmuted now. Hi. Hi, um, thank you so much for doing this. I've been super inspired just to have this every day to like come to and sit down with my work. Um, I'm so glad, thank you. Yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you so much. Um, for the past year, I've been writing a pilot and I've been kind of slaving over it and I finished it a few months ago and I've been in the editing process and it's been really exciting and very fulfilling. But now I'm at this tedious point where I've been asked to write like a treatment. Um, so I'm trying to get this like, you know, 30 to 40 page script that I've been working on now for a very long time onto kind of two pages. Mm -hmm. um, and I've struggled with it in a way that I didn't even experience struggling with like with the script or with the editing. Um, and I'm finding it so hard to like distill what it's about, even though I obviously know, I think I'm so involved with the characters and so involved with what I've been writing that I'm, I'm really struggling to like, summarize it, I guess, um, and pluck out what's most important as the theme and, you know, as these, these overarching kind of pitch things. Um, and I was just wondering if you've ever been asked to kind of like summarize your work, if you've ever had to do this for your own work before, what your process is like. Um, yeah. Any advice or wisdom? Sure. Sure. That's great. So you've written a pilot. Um, you've done the, the, the most of the hard work or, you know, the hard work is the writing and the hard work is the rewriting and right. And the hard work is also the treatment writing and the, and the pitching and all that, which is different. I mean, it, yeah. oftentimes when we, when we write things, some people prefer writing uh, to rewriting, like who likes writing the first drafts more than they like rewriting anybody like show of hands. Yeah. Some people like writing first drafts more. who likes the rewriting process better than the writing process. Anybody? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and some people don't like either of those. And some people love just talking about their work, you know, right. You know what I mean? So, sure. so you, you find the writing and the rewriting process engaging and fulfilling. And, and while it's a challenge, it's, you know, something you can do, which is great Meredith. <laughs> and now you got to enter into that other arena, right. That yeah. other stage and prepare pitch projects. I pitch a lot, a lot, you know, in front of rooms of, well, room, yeah, rooms of people, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I do a lot of pitching. That's part of the, you know, that's part of the job. On the other, even in, in playwriting, you got to pitch. Um, even in playwriting, you know, if we're lucky enough to get our plays, you know, produced in places, they, uh, the, 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 uh, the publisher wants you to help write the blurb. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So, you know, or the, the producer wants your, your, your help in crafting a blurb. So that's like a treatment. It's a very small treatment, but those kinds of things, I do a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, just uh, try to, um, do you have a friend that hasn't read the pilot? Um, I've asked most to read it at this point, <laughs> but yeah, 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 I do. Okay, great. Do you have a pet? I don't. Okay, do you have a stuffed animal? Yes, sure. <laughs> or a sock, whatever. Okay, stuffed animal, great. So, or a child, small child, or ch a teenager, or whatever, some ch child person. Um, tell it to them. Okay. You know, just keep it simple, you know? Keep it really simple. All your beautiful curly cues, all your brilliant dialogue, all your perfect moments, and your moment where she picked up the timer and then dropped it. You know what I mean? Oh my God, that's such a great act out. You know, maybe you don't need to include that part, right? You don't need to include every brilliant thing that you've written in your, in your pilot. Mm -hmm. um, but you do need to, uh, I would suggest it, it's for te television. Yeah. I would suggest um, uh, talking about, you know, making sure you talk about the main characters, the character's journey, the overarching story, why you wanted to, write this, you know, why you wrote this thing. Mm -hmm. And then act one, act two, I don't know how many acts, is it four or five or? Three acts, three acts, half hour. Okay, okay great. So act one, act two, act three, you know? 
Here yeah. it is, here it is, here it is. Do a little bit. Uh, how long is the, the treatment has to be two pages? Yeah, roughly. They ask for okay. one pager, they ask for a two pager. Yeah, yeah. Just get in, get out. Speed, yeah. speed dating. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, just hit it and quit it. I mean, try. Have you have you written it already? Have you do you have a draft of it? Yeah, I have a draft of it and I guess, I guess I feel like I'm repeating the same thing a few times, A, and then B, I feel, I, I keep questioning whether it's, um, what, I keep questioning whether it's like sellable. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't fear that when I'm re writing my script, like I feel really good about the story and the, pe like doing that part feels more organic than I guess like position, like positioning it. Um, or dis, I guess distilling it, like that's that's really what I'm struggling with because it, yeah. it's about so much, right? Like to me, of course, but yeah, yeah. Um, but I, but we, you know, I mean, you know, we we can pitch a 120 page movie in yeah. five minutes. I mean, you know, this is, you know, so it, it's not. But it, I think the 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 other thing is, I feel maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I uh, I feel you. You know, there's the writing part of it, which is very organic to the writing process. And then this other, this other part of it, <laughs> which is treatments and selling it and trying to see if it will fit in the marketplace. You know what? Guess what? You've chosen to write a 30 minute, right? You've chosen the field. Yeah. It's part of the, what you're, it's part of the process. So yeah. by separating them and going, this is so great. I mean, not, we're, we're allowed to say, this is the part I enjoy. And this is the part I don't enjoy so much. But I think we, we trip ourselves up when we start saying this is natural and organic and meh, and this is eh, just some co commercial shit that I got to I got to do to sell it. And I don't like it anyway. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're kind of meh, meh, poo pooing this part, the, 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 the treatment part of the process. If guess what, if you're writing for television or film or whatever, you, that's part of the process. Mm. Okay. I knew somebody once a while ago who um, loved writing, developing characters, right? But she hated plot. <laughs> she came in one day to, to uh, either it was this or the, one of the classes I teach uh, uh, at NYU. And she said, um, I've got these great characters, but now I got to figure out a plot to put them in. And I thought, gee, no wonder you're having a hard time. You hate the process of plot making. You don't see it as integral to what you're doing. Hmm. So writing treatments is a basic part of writing for the medium that you have chosen. So enjoy it, <laughs> enjoy it, keep it simple, keep it quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ta when, you, when you read it to yourself or to your friends or to your stuffed animal, right? Hmm. Stand up and read it, pitch it. Hey, so it's like this and this and this and this and this. Keep it moving, keep it exciting. And the parts of it that you think, oh gee, I, I left out that really fun part. Try to get it in there in a short, concise sentence. Okay. okay. All right, have fun with it. It's part, of, it's part of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Meredith. All right, next we have Marga. Oh, are you unmuted? This button is not letting me click it. Got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, I'm unmuted. Uh, hi, SLP. Hey, Marga. Uh, I wanted to add my gratitude. Oh, um, this is the first time I've done Watch Me Work um, this week. I think this is my third that I've attended. And um, I just did it, you know, because I saw it and it's like, really? I can, I can, uh, I can go, <laughs> I can attend. Uh, from, I'm, I'm in San Francisco now, but I'm originally from New York. Um, so mostly, uh, I just wanted to tell you that um, this has um, been very healthy for me, and uh, to be in this in you know in the group and see everybody working on this process has been really important um, self care. And um, I guess the question uh, I'd like to ask is: um, Do you always feel finished when you write a piece? What what do you finish? Like like first draft? I'm done. No. Mm -mm. no. Draft, when do you when, do, when do you know when do you know you're done? Right. There's a there's a little sound that you know, Tinkerbell <laughs> comes and goes. The timer? Uh, yeah, the time the time the time runs out. Um no. Um when do I know that I'm done? Um 
it's a skill. It's just like writing and rewriting, you know, it's just like writing treatments. It, you, it's a skill that we learn uh, the more we write or that we try, that we work to learn. Um, you know, I, I let go of scripts fairly easily. I know there, there are very esteemed writers in our universe that, you know, they're, they're still rewriting that, that wonderful, you know, beautiful thing that, you know, they, they will go in and rehearse. Edward Albee used to follow his plays around and, and Samuel Beckett too, and ah, you know, that kind of thing to make sure it was done right or to make sure maybe change a little bit here and there. Um, I don't, I'm not that kind of writer. So I'm the kind of writer who works on, you know, it's like catch and release. That's what I say a lot. So here it comes, you catch, it comes from the spirit. You do your thing with it and then you let it go. Oh, here's another one, right? Because I'm really interested in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I'm interested, if I'm, if I'm not gonna let it go, then I'm not gonna be able to do this. You see what I mean? So I'm okay with it because, and also number one, I'm, I love the process, right? So this is the process and I love doing that. Um, I don't believe in perfect. Okay. You know, That's great. you know, I mean, if we believe, if any of us believe God or whatever, they say God is good. They don't say God is perfect. <laughs> okay. Right. God yeah. is good. Good. We have a saying in our, in our family, in our family, here they are, they're back there in the bedroom um you know good good enough it's good mm -hmm. enough moving on <laughs> you know or you can sing that song from frozen let it go that's good you know what i'm saying so you work but that doesn't mean i'm frivolous and and slipshod and all that right i yep. really 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 work on it draft after draft after draft after draft if it's a play reading workshop if it's a teleplay i'm on set rewriting then I'm in the editing room, rewriting, basically, you know what I'm saying? So it's a constant, constant process. And then that's as much as I can do. You just know when you've had enough. Go, Margo, yeah? For, uh, for theater, um, I swear, but is there like a, a, a span of time that you usually look at, like a year, two years, when, when you feel you've put in the hours for a piece it, it, it's different with every play it's different whether some plays come quickly and they're woo they're good and then we're on broadway amazing right some plays oh take a lot of and then it premieres say at the wonderful public theater and wow great and you know there's no there's no i don't say i'll spend two years on this or three years on this they they take the time they take uh, but i we're also work on lots of projects at the same time Okay. So okay. I would say, do the work you, 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 when you feel like I'm just rewriting this and I'm going to fix a comma, you know, cause, or you feel like it's not perfect yet. If you're starting to feel like that, it's time to let it go. If you're feeling like I've done what I wanted to do. Sure. It could be better. Maybe, maybe not let it go. Go on to the next one. You want to develop a body of work that's well crafted and that you've really worked on, but not overworked. You know, like pancakes. Have you ever made pancakes? I'm a waffle girl. You're a waffle girl. Well, maybe it's the same thing. You stir that batter too much. Those, oh. th 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 those pancakes, waffles aren't going to like do their thing, right? You uh -huh. can't beat it too much, right? And I don't know. That's, yeah. that's I, pancakes and popcorn. That's kind of my limit of cooking, but. <laughs> Okay, does that make, you know, so it's a skill you got to learn. You got to, yeah. you got to learn. You got to learn when to, you know, you bring it in, work on it, and then let it go. Let it out into the world and see what happens. Oh, thanks. That's perfect. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next we have Simone. Simone, are you unmuted? Yes. Hello. This is my first time. So thank you. This has been a really beautiful energy exchange. My question for you um, is about your process for world building. Where do you start? World building like? Like in a story or even, um, yeah. 
world so how do you what yeah what's your process for starting that creating the world uh -huh. that your characters are living in uh-huh well w the world that my characters are living in that's a really great question so i start with the characters okay right start with the characters um i think that's so i um you know, I, I, a lot of writers start with the concept, yeah, it's a dystopian universe where everybody has three eyes and, and you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, okay, may, maybe that, that is in a way starting with character too. I, you know, there's a character with three eyes and what kind of world does she live in, you know? Um, but I basically start with the character and I have them, I sort of have them tell me the story, you know, as much as I can. Tell me the story. Why are you visiting me? Why are you haunting me? What do you want? Mm. You know, why did you come onto the stage or into my consciousness, onto the stage of my consciousness, or onto the stage of my unconsciousness, depending on where I am? You know what I mean? But I, I start with the, the characters, you know? Tell me a story, character. Tell me your story, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I follow the characters, I give them names, even if I change their names later. Or I change the story later. I've written whole drafts of things that weren't even near right. It weren't even near what they were when they were produced or published, you know? But I follow the characters. Okay. Every once in a while, I get a kooky idea for something. And I follow the kooky idea. Every rare, well, maybe more often than rare. But, you know, like I'm going to write a riff on the Scarlet Letter and I'm going to call it fucking A. Ha, ha, ha. It was just a joke. I told a friend, Bonnie. Metzger, you know, one day, ha ha, it was so funny. She didn't laugh. It was so funny though, that I went ahead and did it, you know, but <laughs> you know, uh, follow your imagination. Does that make, does that make sense? You know? Yeah, it does make sense. Okay. Make sense. So, and if it's a world that we don't know, you gotta be really specific. Okay. What are the rules of this world? You have to paint, or what I say, you have to paint the scenes that we don't see. So you know how on a, on, on stage, you know, or even in a like a TV show, the set is very beautiful, right? But the scene works because the writer and the whole crew and cast have created the scenes that we don't see, mm -hmm. right? Right? So like in, um, what's that play? Not Hecuba, Phaedra right? Okay. So Phaedra, so, you know, this, anyway, this guy, he has an accident involving a uh, chariot and Poseidon and we don't see it because it's Greek theater and they were saving money, you know? So they had all their big action scenes like off stage. I'm not a professional dramaturg, but this is how I interpret it. Right? So a messenger would always come in. Right. And he'd say, Oh my God, you won't believe what I saw. A guy riding a chariot, Poseidon comes up out of the sea and the guy, oh, and he falls off his chair and it's a horrible accident, right? Okay. They created that whole scene mm -hmm. on the stage of your consciousness, the most underused venue in the world, your mind, right? They've created that scene in your mind, right? So when we're world building, we have to take that into account also. Okay, but I, I like starting with character. If you don't feel like starting with character, start with, you know, just, well, you know, I, I, I'm dreaming about this world where everyone is, you know, has wings or something, you know, that, you know, I don't know. Start with something and follow it. And the most important thing about world building is showing up and putting the time in. Indeed. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Simone. All right. Next, we have Julian. Hey, how are you? Julian, how are you? There you are. Um, I'm, uh, I guess my biggest question is how, um, how, do you know where you're going when you're writing or do you, do you have an outline? Do you know the ending? Um, I sort of just let my character speak to me and I keep, uh -huh. and what happens is I always get stuck and I don't, and I have no or, no idea where to take them <laughs> towards the ending. So right. I wonder if you have an, if you, in your process, do you always have an ending in sight mm -hmm. uh, or do your characters tell you what the ending is? Right. Um, so here's, I'll pull back from that. How Do you enjoy the process of having your characters talk to you and just seeing where they go? Is that enjoyable to you? 
it's enjoyable until uh -huh. it <laughs> and, until until you kind of hit a, hit a, a wall or a uh -huh. yeah and then, then, and then what do you do i don't know I, I i try and push through i try and create an obstacle for them like a meteor will come through the window or something like that and they have to deal with it um, right, 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 right. give them something to over to divert mm -hmm. um but it, I, I just, it always tends to be really problematic for me and then I'm stuck for a really long time. Right, so do you have, um, do you not like the idea of outlining? Outlining. I, yeah, I, no, I'm not against it. <laughs> wow, so, so the question is, so has this kind of following the characters and then you get to a point where you kind of hit a wall, has that happened more than once? Yes. Yeah, so what happens is I'm always like writing these characters. Uh, a plot, a plot sort of reveals itself, which is really cool. I'm like, oh, look at this great plot, and then, and then it gets to a point where I'm like, okay, now I don't know how to keep the ball in the air or to like. Right. Hand over the net. Right. Yeah. So, so my question is: so if this has happened to you more than once, and you don't dislike outlining, why haven't you tried outlining? Because then I feel like because sometimes it. it becomes it just feels like i'm going a b c d e it just feels it, it ends up becoming cliche for me okay so I, okay so outlines put you in this cliche feeling space yeah okay and what if you wrote an outline that wasn't wasn't <laughs> sure I mean, like, again, I use this analogy a lot of times. What if, you know, you were in your, where do you live, Julian? I'm in Queens. Oh, okay, okay, great. So, okay, so let's say, let's say, you know, we were living large and we both had automobiles. <laughs> and let's say you got in your automobile and you wanted to come over and hang out in Washington Square Park, which is right over there. Right. Okay, which is right. Okay, so you're like, Oh, wait a minute, that's cliche. Is that cliche? You're gonna get in your car, you're gonna come and hang out in Washington Square Park. Is that cliche? No. Not it's an outline though. It's huh? an outline, right? It's, it's an, an outline. outline. Yeah. We got character, we got desire, we got where he's gonna end up, hmm. right? We got even means of how he's gonna get there. Right. He's living large and he has a car. You see what I'm saying? I do. We know where he's going. We know what he wants. We know how he's gonna get there. But we don't know like all the other things. Like, are you gonna stop at like, you know, you, you know, cool bodega and get some cool sandwiches or something on the way? Mm -hmm. Or is it gonna be raining? I don't know, but that's an outline. I think when we, out, outlines kind of give us a bad, you know, even if we say we don't dislike them, we tend to say, maybe I shouldn't go there because my writing's gonna be cliche. But what if your first draft, Julian, let's just say you had an outline. And the one thing you don't have to do when you write an outline is you don't have to use Roman numerals. Hmm. I just, we're free of that. We're not in Rome. And even if we were, <laughs> we, you know, right? Okay, so no Roman numerals necessary. And you're gonna write this outline. And what if we say you wrote an outline and your first draft was cliche? So, right? Right, we can fuck with it later. Rewrite, yo. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? But you will have created a map for yourself, a path, and you still might get stuck, but at least you'll go, well, scene two, scene seven, I, I don't know how to write that scene where they get in a fight and, and he slaps him and right. then he says, shit. And then he throws a shoe at him and then he runs down the street. I don't know how to write it, but I'm just gonna like blah, 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 write it anyway. Okay, because I know how to write scene eight. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you just kind of blew it and then you, you know. Right. Okay, cool. It's it's it, and it's okay if the first draft or the second draft or the third draft is cliche. It's okay. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> now you're in the outline club. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I I, I do a lot of outlining. Cool. Because okay. I just because then I can relax my creative mind. Ah. ah. So it's, it's it's a way for you to like not feel pressure. Well, I no. It's a way for me to feel the full extent of the pressure of the creative process of having to come up with shit for each scene. But I don't have to think about the scene. Got it. You see what I mean? So I'm, feel, I'm, I'm feeling the pressure, 
but I don't like you're driving your car from Queens to Manhattan. You're not feeling the pressure. Oh shit, where am I going? Oh no, you don't have to think about that. You have to think about, oh, here's the traffic. Here's a car, it's raining, here are the wipers. Got what it. song do I wanna hear on the radio? I get to delight in the details. Cool. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Give it a try, <laughs> see if it works. I will. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Julian. Thank you. All right. Next, we've got Natalia. Oh, are you there? Oh, there you go. Yes, I'm here. There you go. Where are you in a beautiful, is that like just a backdrop or is that like real? No. <laughs> um, I'm out in Oakland actually, and oh. um, I'm an, a Los Angeles native, but I moved up here for the Bay Area Theater. Um, I would say, first of all, um, I'm just very honored to, to be here. Um, I'm. I guess I would call myself a closeted writer. Um, <laughs> I just, I like to write in my journal. I like to write about my feelings and a lot of my um, work stems from personal experience. So um, for example, what I'm working on now is a, is a play. I'm not sure if it's gonna be one act or a two acts, um, but I do know the theme is gonna be focused on family. So um, the thing I have struggles with is pulling away from the very personal work and giving it space so others can also connect to it. Um, I'm, I'm not necessarily striving forward like the universal, like the universal um, message. I just want people to, um, to feel it, you know? And I want people to, um, even if they don't have the same circumstances in the piece that they're watching, I want them to have some kind of um, connectivity to it. Mm -hmm. So I think what, for me, what I want to do is um, make work that appeals to not everybody, but I, I just wanna reach an audience where um, they can relate to a personal experience. Cause it's, I think sometimes it could be too much when there's a lot of emotion. Um, for example, um, I actually watched a recent play of yours um, and I really enjoyed it. I watched it at uh, the Berkeley Rep. And um, I also watched it in the, at the public theater. So I watched it twice. I had the, the pleasure of seeing David Diggs portraying the same character. Um, and it really inspired me. So I, want, I wanted to write a piece um, in the similar vein to that. So I don't know if, if you have any advice for that writing process of uh, combining the personal, but also the public eye. I guess that was a lot of explanation. I'm also uh -huh. like nervous. So. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. No, it's great to want to write things that, that touch people. It's great to want to write things that come from a personal place and, and you want them to touch people. I say, um, you know, uh, there's, a, I don't know who said this quote, um, no tears in the writer, no tears in the reader, you know? So I feel like Natalia, if you're feeling it, a ch the chance that somebody else, an audience person or many audience people might be feeling it is, is high, you know, yeah. because we are cut from the same cloth, all of us, you know, and not exactly, you know, we're all exactly not going to be feeling the same things about the same things, but, but there's a good chance that if you're feeling things when you write it and when you read it and, and you know, then there's a good chance that, that, that we also might be, be feeling things. Yeah, there's, um, so Anna DeVere Smith is also a very, uh, just like amazing writer that I also relate to because she does a really beautiful thing with interviewing people and keeping like their voices very, you know, it, it's their voice um, and she's using their voice to share a message that um, touches people. And so like Twilight Los Angeles was a piece that I really resonated with. Um, I went to UC Santa Cruz, so we did a lot of, uh, work where it was very experimental and we had a beautiful opportunity to also have student run productions. And so that was a production I was a part of where I had to memorize a 12 minute monologue. I'm primarily an actor. Um, and that hit a lot of different inspirations. And I started writing about four years ago, this play, but I, I like let it go. I like push it to the side. Um, so this is just kind of like wiping the dust off of my work mm -hmm. and I guess like starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, this is this is very helpful because I've come up with having a, a narrator 
as part of my play to kind of give that neutral like the neutralness um or just kind of a, like the messenger like you said mm -hmm. so that was very helpful um uh -huh. and, just make sure you, you know, put the time in natalia that's the most important thing i mean if you're if you're sort of you're outing yourself in front of all these people as a writer uh, you can just sit on the closet <laughs> and write. So now you're now you're a writer. We're going to hold you accountable, and you got to put the time. And that's the most important thing that you can do. Um, it, uh, more important than trying to calculate how many people it will resonate with or whatever. You know, um, you got to put the time in. You got to spend. You know, I would say at least you know 20 minutes a day um, yeah. working on your work, whether it's free writing and just getting ideas, developing characters, developing the world, like Simone was talking about, whatever you do, you got to, you got to put the time in, um, every day if you can. Um, and that will really help your project, you know, develop. So. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Natalia. All right. We've got about three minutes left. Um, the next person is Alex. Oh my gosh, I didn't think I was gonna get to go. <laughs> um, hey, what's up you guys? Um, so I'm also a closeted writer. I'm also a writer. A lot of the things that people have been sharing, I feel um, at also just like crazy amounts of gratitude for having this opportunity. This is incredible. Um, something that I've been feeling a lot, um, I'm writing my first, it was a screenplay. Now it's turning into a pilot. Um, is a similar thing to what was said before about, um, it's not about outlining, it's about finding where I'm headed and finding the, um, I do a similar thing to what was said before about like the character speaking to you and telling you where it's headed. Um, and I'm just having trouble finding the next plot point. And so I think it's more about that moment of like, um, that moment of discovery, like my writing it, sometimes I get stuck. And then it's like, I don't, I don't know. How, I don't know where to outline to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know where the, if I were to outline where the outline is going to go and how, if you have any uh, advice about when you're in that process and you feel that block, any mm -hmm. kind of like exercise mm -hmm. or like, muscle building to to spark the creative process again or get the story moving mm -hmm. i don't know yeah yeah i i, I do and, and a lot of the, the the muscle building activities uh involve doing stupid things i use that <laughs> word i don't use that word lightly stupid things because i think we all want to do well you know so sometimes wanting to do well, wanting to write well, wanting to look good, wanting to look like we know, eh, it gets in the way of just getting something done or getting a, an, an attempt out, getting that first draft out, right? So if you're outlining and you don't know where to outline to, ask yourself, what do your characters want more than anything? Again, using Julian, you know, and me in the car in Washington Square Park and in Queens, you know, if Julian's character, I want to go to Washington Square Park, you know? great, then that's what they're going to be doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you, but it doesn't have to be a great thing like Washington Square Park. It can be stupid things. So think of 10, like I was telling Carol, I think yesterday, think of 10 stupid things that your character wants to do, or think of 10 stupid things, 10 stupid ways to end your pilot. Uh, if it's a pilot you're <laughs> writing. Okay. 10 totally stupid things. They go to the moon. They, you know, whatever, whatever. They have to be stupid <laughs> because you, you're, I'm encouraging you to allow yourself to just write something. Okay, that's yeah. I just write something. It's funny the minutia. You know, when you were using the example of like in being in the car or whatever, and you don't know where they're gonna, you know, if they're gonna stop or they're gonna grab something or they're gonna roll down the window or they're gonna swerve or whatever. Um, the minutia for me is so easy to write. I'm sure this is not uncommon, and it's like the big things that happen where I'm like, oh. So the stupid thing exercise would be helpful just to mm -hmm. like get, break out of the box a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Rumi, the poet Rumi says, wisdom is knowing what to pay attention to and what to ignore. Mm. So when you are writing your outline, ignore the minutia. Writing, you know, that's not going to help you necessarily, you know? Mm -hmm. 
when you're writing your draft, your dialogue, your juicy, beautiful, you know, plot points, I mean, your juicy, beautiful scenes and all that, then you pay attention to the, the smaller things. You start big and go in, right? Yeah. Okay. So know what to pay attention to and know what to ignore and when to pay attention to those things and when to not pay attention to them. That makes so sense? useful. Thank you so much. It's 601. It's 601. Turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um do you want to talk about am i going to talk about next week or are we talk, talk about next week all right you guys next week as promised the links they are up on the public theater website they're all correct now um you can go and sign up you put your name your email address and we send you a link um by 3 p.m each day um yeah we look forward to having you we'll be here god willing and the you know the creek don't rise yeah. Okay. But thank you guys. You guys have made this really wonderful. It's the first time I think I've done it for five days in a row. So thanks. This is really, really great. We love you guys. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. You know how, you know the drill. Okay. Bye SLP. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.